Hello friends, my name is Sumit and in this session I will talk about what is big data in absolute layman terms. So let's see. Okay, so let's say you have a small file which is present on your laptop. So let's say you have a small file, let's say file 1, which has some text, whatever text it can be, and it's present on your laptop. Let's say the file size is 20 MB. 20 MB, as you know, is not that much, so that's fine. Now, as I said, this file is residing on your laptop. Okay. Now, I have to find out number of words in this file. That's my task, let's say. So how do you find the number of words? In traditional way, you can write a simple C program, Java program, Python program or anything to solve this problem. It's quite easy. Now I do not have to mention here how to find the number of words in the file. It's quite an easy program to do in a traditional way. Fine. Now consider instead of a 20 MB file, so we consider this as a 20 MB file. Instead of 20 MB, consider the file is very very big. Let's say it is 4 TB. When I say TB, I hope you understand it is terabytes. 4 TB is quite big. By the way, just to let you know, 1 TB equal to 1024 GB. And 1 GB equal to 1024 MB. So you can understand 4 TB is quite a big data that we are talking about which definitely my laptop won't be able to handle or store that file. Because in my laptop I have 1 TB as a hard disk. 1 TB hard disk. So nowadays what the laptops which we get normal laptops sometimes we have 500 GB as the hard disk or 1 TB it can be 2 TB also fine. But ideally, we do not have 10 TBs or 20 TBs ideally, right? So my problem statement is, I want to handle a file which is a 4 TB, looks quite big. Can my laptop, which has the capability to handle 1 TB of file, handle this file? No, it cannot because I can store just 1 TB and the file size is 4 TB here. Now in this situation, what should I do? You might say that, okay, Sumit sir, why don't you buy a laptop which can handle 4 TB? Because there might be some good laptop which can handle 4 TB. Okay, based on your suggestion, I purchased a laptop. Fine. I am able to handle it and process it. Okay, it's taking time but I am able to do it. Now what if this file size is 10 TB? What if this file size is 10 TB? Now will you ask me that sir purchase a laptop which handle 10 TB? No. Right? Because we cannot keep on increasing the hardware or purchasing such high configuration machines. Because there will be a time when even if you take the highest configuration machine, you won't be able to accommodate that data. In such cases, what will you do? And that's where the role of big data technologies comes in. So let's see how it works. So I'll run this. So you understood the problem statement that I have let's say a 4 TB file which my laptop cannot handle because my laptop can handle 1 TB and I need to process it. What to do? In this case, what we ideally do in big data technology stack is we talk about a cluster of machines. Instead of one single machine, we say single person cannot do it, bring a team. And that's where let's say we have 4 machines. These are machines, servers, technically called as nodes. So consider this is node 1, this is node 2, node 3 and node 4. Let's say these are the 4 nodes. I mean, if you do not or if you have not heard the name node, do not get afraid. I mean, it's just normal machines, servers. I mean, it will be better than your laptops, but some hardware, you can understand. Now, 
to gather all of this is called as a cluster cluster and in this case what i have drawn here is a four node cluster we can have a thousand node cluster also there are some e-commerce companies which uses pretty big clusters okay so now what i will do is you remember i have a 4 tb file which is pretty big now can't i divide the file into smaller parts like this first part second part third part and fourth part that means part one part two part three and part four and i will then store this part here that means part one here part two here part three here and part four here that means i have broken the big file into small small chunks and given each of the chunk to separate machines right now is this possible that this can be stored this way yes because you remember our machine is capable to handle 1 tb now we have 4 tb data and we have handled it like this now i won't talk about tvs or gbs now consider big file we divide it into small small parts and then spread it across the cluster right so the storage part is taken care wow awesome but i just came to this cluster to store the data no i had a requirement that i want to find the number of words in this big file how do i find it now storage part i have taken care now i have to take care of the processing part now what will happen ideally in big data environments is this machine is a self capable machine that it can process some data also because it will have the CPU power it will have the memory it will have the storage storage is used to store it so let me talk about this so each machine has resources and three kind of major resources number one your memory which is nothing but RAM number two storage which is nothing but hard disk and number three CPU which is nothing but the compute power right for example consider it with your laptop you might have a laptop with 8 GB RAM so this is nothing but the memory you might have a laptop with 1 TB of hard disk that is nothing but the storage and you might have a laptop with quad core processor Intel i3 or whatever so that is nothing but the CPU so all these machines have all these components now which component is required for processing your CPU right so basically what will happen now as part of processing is on this part 1, a part of this file, the processing should happen in node 1. On this part 2, this one, processing should happen in node 2 and likewise. That means all these four machines can work in parallel to get that now how many words are there in this. Let's say there are 16 words. Ideally, we are saying 1 TB it should be much more, but for simplicity, I wrote 16. In P2, let's say there are 18 words. In P3, let's say there are 14 words and in P4, let's say there are 10 words. So each of machine worked in parallel to get this. Okay. Now, is this your final solution? I mean, each of the machines calculated the result, but was I looking for that? No. I was looking for the total number that how many words are there in this file. So I have got the partial result right now. Then actually this results what happen goes to another machine. All these results goes to another machine. So in this machine, this machine will be like this. Let's say consider node 5. Right? So this machine will get the data 16, 18, 14 and 10. Sorry, my handwriting is a bit bad, but I hope you can understand if you are following. So this is how it happens. Now, what this machine has to do is, this machine has to 
do the final aggregation and give you the result. That means 16 plus 18, what is that? 34, 34 plus 14, 48, 48 plus 10, 58. And this is your final answer. So that's how big data systems work. They say that, give me a big data problem. I will divide that data into multiple machines and then solve the problem on each machine. But sometimes it's not that you solve the problem on each machine can give you the final result. You might have to put that data or the intermediate result to some other machine in order to get the final results. And just to let you know, a little bit technical term I will use here. When you send the data from this machine to this machine, right? This process of moving the data from these machines where the work was happening parallel to the final machine where final result is calculated, this process is called as shuffling because the data is literally moved from one place to another. So this is called as shuffling. So I think this is a little messed up now in terms of the drawing. Let me rub it and I will tell you the main points here again. So you understood that a bigger file, we divide it in four parts. In this case, we can divide it in number of parts. That's up to us, right? Now, if these are the four machines, this machine is called as node one, node two, node three, node four. And the hard disk part of it, let's say there will be some hard disk to each machine, right? The hard disk part of it, so this is hard disk of machine 1, hard disk of machine 2, hard disk of machine 3, hard disk of machine 4. This together in the Hadoop terminology is called as HDFS. Hadoop distributed file system which can handle huge amount of data because it is distributed across machines. It's not on a single machine, right? So we can logically build a cluster of thousand machines and store any amount of data. And when the data grows, add more machines to it, right? So this is what is called as HDFS. Now, whatever part one was kept here of data, part two, part three, and part four. You remember that we broken down the big file into four parts and this is how it is stored. So on this, whatever processing happens here, so CPU here will be processing this, CPU here will be processing this, CPU here will be processing this and this accordingly. So all these four parts are processed in parallel and whatever program we write here in the Hadoop terminology is called as map. So this program, whatever we write here is called as map. Here whatever program we write is called as a map again. This is the third one and this is the fourth one. Right? So we say four mappers are running in parallel. Right? Because our traditional technologies like for example my simple python code which runs on a local machine cannot solve it. Because my simple python program or C program or C++ program knows how to solve a problem in a single system. But in this case, data is not on a single system. That's why my traditional programming paradigms fail. And I require a new programming paradigm, which is called as map reduce ID. Right? And mapper is nothing but the programs which run here on this machine, or the processes which are here on this machine, individual machines. Now, once this map is complete, it will say that, okay, the output is 16. It will say, let's say the output is 18, let's say 14 and 10. So the output of mappers is 16, 18, 14 and 10. But these are not the final output. This has to go to another machine. All these numbers 16, 18, 14 and 10, right? And then it has to be calculated here, the sum of it. And this machine is ideally called as reducer machine in your Hadoop terminology. Why reducer machine? Because 
it has to do aggregations or reduce the data into one single number right so it will sum it up and give you the answer whatever it is let's say 52 i have not calculated randomly i am writing it do not judge my mathematics based on this please so i hope this is clear and the movement of data from this mapper machine to reducer machine is called as shuffling because literally the data is transferred from one machine to another and shuffling is a time consuming process you want to minimize it or avoid it whenever possible because the more shuffling you do the more you have to wait to transfer data from one machine to another machine right so out of this which machines have worked in parallel it's the mapper machines which have given you parallelism and reducer machine finally has aggregated the result now to optimize this problem i should be doing more at the mapper end because we have more number of map machines and we get more parallelism right if we do not do more at mapper end and if we do more at reducer end then it's like working on a laptop why you have to come to this big cluster so our intention is that most of the work should be done in this layer and less work should be done in this layer so i hope this would have make some sense so all the technologies in big data stack revolve around this concept of distributed computing means breaking a big file into smaller files dividing it across machines and then solving the problem right so i can say divide and conquer approach kind of approach is used in your big data systems now there are many things you might have heard of in terms of hadoop ecosystem where we have your uh, hive scoop things like that these are wrappers on top of it because writing this kind of codes what i have talked about map and reduce code is difficult that is why these people have given us easy ways to achieve things right so in my next session i will come up with something more interesting but i hope in this session you would have got some clarity what is the role of big data technology stack and what kind of problems to be solved or what's the use case the use case is simple if you have big data divide it across various machines solve the problem so i hope with this you would have got some understanding thank you for listening to this session thank you